let's just make a nice cloth material, quick and easy, no stress. Let's let's do it. So I will uh, just subdivide this this puppy real quick. HDRI, one second. Load it in HDRI quick, and we got the the base material, right? Um, so let's, let's separate these window. Let's separate this window a little bit and uh, just take a look at what we're working with here. So shader editor. All right. Straight to the point. All right. Let's just make it with the principal BSDF. So clo clothing, like a base cotton shirt, right? Rough. I I don't ever like to go to to roughness of one just for no real reason, but it's just uh, sometimes I keep it on not 0 0.9, 0 0.91, you know, something really high, but not one. Um, specular, keep that low, because so I don't want to re reflect a lot of light off of this. And the trick to some nice cloth is adding a sheen, um, going with 1.5 or you know 1.25, something around there, just having to have, have like a little bit of a glow around the edges. Take a look without sheen, zero. And it's kind of hard to tell here. Let me get a black color so you see. So if it's black, right, this is a material that's rough, has a low specular value, but it has no sheen. Whenever I add in a sheen, watch the edges of this. Look how it sort of sort of gives like a little bit of a glow, right? Cloth has cloth has a tendency to do this, and it looks really nice if you just have this sheen value set to one or a little something slightly over one um so let's, here we go so that's that's a basic cloth and honestly for background characters and stuff this is this is this will do it like you don't have to go crazy with it but say you want to get a little more a little more detailed delete that guy let me add in a plane here and Let's do, let's just do a basic. Got this, little shade smooth action. Grab that and add a collision. And I'll put a cloth modifier on this. And pause, that's perfect. All right, I will give this another subdivision surface just to smooth it out a little bit. And okay, I'm gonna apply these things. Apply the cloth, apply this, shade smooth. Now we have a little cloth shape, and I can apply our cloth material we've already been working on. Oh, it looks like it's gone. Whoops, let me just recreate that. New material, let's just take a look at it over here. Let's do black. All right, specular, low, roughness, high, sheen, 1.25 bang basic cloth all right let's let's spice it up a little bit so what are our uvs looking like perfect they're already lined up so that means because they're already ready to go which you should do before you run a cloth sim by the way um we can start just adding textures on here so with a node wrangler add-on up here you can hit Control t to get a little image texture setup going on with a texture coordinate mapping image texture the basics i'm going to plug this i'm going to take it out of the base color for now and i'm going to open up a texture and you can get a bunch of different textures off textures.com or wherever you do just be sure to get something that's tileable and just a nice little square um, i like to get a fabric and just any fabric normal is amazing so just grab a normal and Grab a normal map and plug the color into here and the normal into this. And now you can start to see we're getting some normal, although it's way too big. I want to scale this up. So five. What are we looking at here? Okay, it's kind of there. We're getting some we're getting some shape. Um, I did this on purpose so I can show you the difference. You have to remember to change the color space for normal from sRGB to non-color. It makes a difference. Look at the normal, non-color, look at sRGB. It doesn't, it doesn't know what to do with the color material, the color data, unless you tell it, hey, this is not color data, this is normal map data. I mean, just, just, set, just set it for non-color if it's going into the normal map. 
and it will just it will look nice and look at that like that's not bad that really is not bad at all you can even scale this up a little more if you want to 12 I like to keep mine relatively low because I like to be able to see that detail even if it's a little bit unrealistic but that's just personal preference um, there you go that that's a cool cloth material now if we can raise this back up a little bit you can set this to any color we want so let's just get like a nice light blue look at that cloth let's add some thickness to it simple solidify not that much 0.0025 okay um, that is kind of weird isn't it let's just give that a there we go one subdivision one subdivision coming right up please all right leave it as is that's perfect last thing i'm on the agenda let's add in some hair particles why don't we if you're if your subject is close up um and you feel like going the extra mile and adding in a little bit extra render time but something that really really sells it uh, i really recommend adding a little bit of hair particles and that's as simple as hitting an add button on the particle systems switching it over to hairs all right it's got to load some the hair kernels give it a minute all right that was horrible wow that took forever okay i will shut up now all right so what we have is all of our hairs going inside um and you can actually see that all the hairs are <clears throat> going in one direction so what we need to do is first of all i only want to just do particles can i do particles before yeah i'm gonna do particles before the subdivision and before the solidify and okay looks like they're all coming out the right angle it can be helpful to check too if you just turn off solidify and you just have one solid piece under this little drop down and overlays you can turn on face orientation and where it's blue it shows that it's facing outward it's facing the proper way the normal is and where it's red it's showing the back side of the normal so anywhere that an object is facing or facing the camera you should want that to be blue uh, giving objects depth helps with that so like single-sided objects like this cloth is right now um, you're gonna have one side that's that's not the proper normal which is why it's helpful to add in the solidify because that just makes both sides both sides blue right for example only when we look inside this cross section will we see a red because we're looking at the inside of the cloth which is very tiny um, but okay so that little rant is over let's work on this particle system so as I was saying earlier it's as easy as particle system switch it to hair uh, this number uh, since this is just a still I'll increase the number to 2500 under source I will use the modifier stack beautiful um, and let's just decrease this size because that is long so 0.01 okay you know as a matter of fact I can literally set this hair to zero length I'll talk about it in a minute I will go down to children and we'll set this to interpolated and we're gonna bring back the children by just increasing this random underneath the roughness of the children so again we're in the particle settings so you don't get lost in the children drop down and then inside the children drop down there's a roughness drop down and inside that roughness you're just gonna increase this random but just do it slowly because if you go if you click and drag it's just gonna go nuts so set this to zero and just slowly holding shift just drag this up you don't need a lot but just a little bit so 0.03 that's looking cool um they're very like shapey right now like a couple sides you can just increase that in the viewport display by increasing the strand steps to a couple here just so you can sort of see what you're working with sometimes it's nice to go to like six um but the one thing to keep in mind though is that's just your strand steps in the viewport display 
Blender has a lot of little things where uh, it's the same setting, but one's for the render and one's for the viewport and one's to tell your mom you did it or something, I don't know. But like, there's just a bunch of little random, uh, random settings. Like for example, look, there's three things that do kind of the same thing. There's segments, strand steps, and under render, you have path steps. So it's like, what are all these things? Like they're kind of similar, but kind of not. Just know that anywhere it says viewport display, this is generally for like your immediate view and this won't affect the render at all. Segments is actually going to affect uh, like the dynamics and the weight uh, of, of this hair and how it actually interacts with the world. Um, but it also helps you sculpt hair, so it gives you more detail when you're sculpting hair. Um, but five is fine for now. Really what we're concerned about is the render one here. I can just increase this stuff like five steps and just check a B spline. And that will just use those steps as a spline. So when I do render a hair, or let's take a look in rendered view, and we can turn off our face orientation for now. We're looking at splines rather than, uncheck this, sort of harsh, harsh lines. Let me go back to like three. You can see what I was saying here. It's kind of hard to see this here. Um, but I guess it's not as bad as I thought. Anyway, I like to just keep B spline on because I know that I'm making a spline out of these hairs. Okay, um, other settings here. We're going to want to turn hair shape down because this is very thick for hair. Uh, so for for hairs, I like to usually do 0.1 if it's like a, like, like a person's hair on their head. But for something like this, that's like a fiber or a cloth, that might actually might it will be thicker than hair so something like 0.2 or 0.22 is gonna give us some nice thickness especially when you're like kind of far out um, and it will start to look nice right now it looks bad and that's actually because of the material so um, there's a couple things you can do if you want to make a special material for your cloth or for any hair particle system um, you can go in here and you can make a new material and you can set it to that. But what I like to do to make things easier is I like to, instead of changing the material for the render thing, I like to just leave it as the material that's on the object and I just build my material in the same, in the same material. So I'll add a principled hair, BSDF, and this is, this is great for hair, principled BSDF. Watch when I plug this in. It doesn't work for meshes because it gives you this little, this like fiber, this carbon fiber grid looking thing, but the hairs look amazing. Um, and you can just click and drag the color from this and just drop it right up into there. So we're getting the, the good color here. I'll increase this roughness up here. Yeah, and the radial roughness. This isn't a hair, this is more of like a cloth fiber. Um, and you can mix these together. So I will mix two shaders. I will mix the hair in the bottom and the, the regular, the cloth material in the top and then plug this right in. Now we have a slider that determines, is it A, the hair shader or B, is it the cloth shader? Well, we're going to determine this with a hair info node and this hair is strand is a really important node. This is just saying, yo, dude, is this thing a strand of hair, right? Look, I plug this right in and it quite literally just does that. It's saying everywhere that it's a strand of hair, it's getting this material, the principled hair. And everywhere that it's not, it's getting the regular principled BSDF. So that gives you these nice sort of glowing pieces of hair. Um, and they interact super nicely with light. So if I delete that, you can see it just sort of has this this look to it. Um, but if I add a light back into it, or just control Z, bring a light back into it, it just lights these hairs up just so nicely and it gives a nice edge to it. Um, 
if, you, if your GPU can handle it, I love increasing the display amount on these children to like 50 initially, just so you can see a little closer to what you're going to be getting at the end. And you can actually start to see that, okay, this is a little, this is kind of thick, this hair. So I definitely want to turn down the roughness because I don't need my cloth to be this hairy. So I just hold shift and drag down on this random. I can even just type in, I'm just going to go 0.01 for the randomness. And that's looking a little bit nicer. Maybe I do want to drop down this diameter root to 0.1. How's that going to be? Sometimes it's nice to just experiment with having uh, more hairs at a smaller size or less hairs at a larger size. That's looking kind of cool. You have to remember um, it's not about the little hairs on there, so you don't want that to be overwhelming. Uh, you want them to supplement the main focus, which is this whole this whole thing, and that is looking cool. I might actually just take a look here. Have full render, full display mount. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that, that's super cool. So there's that. That's that's going the extra mile to make your to make your clothing look fuzzy and fibery, so to speak. Um, yeah, let me know if you like this or if this worked for you. But you can do any of these cloths. You know, you can do the most basic one. High roughness, low specular, very high sheen. That's a very basic cloth setup. If you just want to just a quick throw something together, have a background character that's not going to take a long time to render, that's that's perfectly fine. You want to go the extra mile, you do the first couple things. Then uh, you might want to add in a little normal map like you see here. Just something something to give it a little bit of a bump on a, on a small fine scale. And then uh, to top it off, maybe even uh, go the extra mile and throw in a little particle system like I did here. Um, but yeah, that's... So that's making a nice cloth material. Thanks for watching.